Welcome back to Caffeine Confessionals. My name is Alan Aguirre, and today we have some challenge news for you. Not the MTV challenge, not Challenge USA, not the international challenges, not Challenge All-Stars. It's all four of them a bit thrown into one as the global challenge that they kept name dropping every week on Challenge USA is finally upon us. The players from all these different versions of the show were competing in what was originally supposed to be an all-champions version of the show. And then MTV started doing the casting and they realized, oh my gosh, so many of our former champions, specifically like on the female side, have no interest in our show anymore because we treated them poorly or because we banned them, and there's just so many people where they just couldn't cast them, or they didn't, didn't, or they couldn't pay them enough money, or there's just different reasons. And so when you do a show and you don't have many new champions over X amount of years, and you have to try and cast an all champion show, it gets very difficult at times. But the global challenge is upon us, and I want to thank Pink Rose Gamer and the spoiler team at Vemo.com because they collected all the information on who's going to be on the cast for the season. We're going to take a moment. To go through the cast, we're just going to go through the list, and I'm just going to give you some thoughts on them. Some of these people, I'm going to be real, I have zero clue at all. And the big thing, the big disclaimer, please leave this video if you don't know any spoilers. No, normally, we don't talk about spoilers on, on this channel, but because part of the castings of this season are related to spoilers that happen in future seasons or seasons that have recently happened, it's, it's impossible to ignore. I mean, if I just was like, oh, why is this person on here? Oh, wait, wait, why are they here? You'd be like, I, like, dude, just look at the internet. Spoilers exist. So if you don't want no spoilers, just leave this video right now. But let's go through this cast. Uh, again, thank you to Pink Rose and the sport team at Vedmo.com. You can find the link to Vedmo to stay updated on cast stuff or discussion, stuff like that at the bottom of this video. Let's jump right into it. Going on to Vedmo, let's jump right into it. TJ Lavin will be the host of this global season. It'll be filming in South Africa, and they'll be filming for seven weeks like a normal challenge season. Originally, I was hearing that it could be one week or two weeks. It could just be like one mega intense final, but apparently it's going to be a full season with seven weeks of filming. Yeah. Also, people will be dropped because they just get dropped because they're alternates that we don't know of or because of COVID or whatever happens. Crazy things happen with casting. Let's jump right into it. First, we have Amber Bazotra, the winner of Double Agent. She looks gorgeous. I mean... Amber's really made of herself like a bigger presence in these recent seasons after winning her championship. She's become a bigger character after winning. So glad to see Amber back. We, uh, we have Brad Fiorenza, winner of Cutthroat. He was second place on Challenge All-Stars 3 and really was Bionic Brad. I and mean, he was the best competitor all season in the Daily Challenges, but then he just came up short to Wes in the final. Brad's a beast. I'm excited to see him on the show. Darrell Taylor, four-time Challenge Championship, runner-up of both Challenge All-Stars 2 and 1. Uh, Darrell's a beast. I mean, when you think about like putting the best players uh, against the other best players all the time, Darrell is definitely someone that you see in that pack, even though he's kind of fallen off a bit in recent seasons. Jody Weatherton from the Gauntlet 2 and the Duel. Uh, she won her two championships and then came in fourth place on Challenge All Star Season 2. Actually, came in fifth place. Jody was the best player all season in those daily challenges. She's a beast. I mean, she's been one of the best. Physical athletes the challenge has ever seen. Her only weakness is a bit of the mental political game, and she can get, you know, people people dig at her emotions really easily. I mean, Jody wears her heart on her sleeve, and people take advantage of it. Next, we got Johnny Bananas, seven-time challenge champion. Uh, he just came back on the most recent season, uh, Ride or Dies. Before that, he won Total Madness. I mean, again, when you put the best players against the best players all time, Johnny Bananas is a guy you have to have on there. Johnny Mannion, the queen, uh, the face of Challenge All-Stars, uh, winner of seasons two and three, came in first place among females on season one. Again, we're talking about putting the best players against the best players, and John A is, you know, she's a top 10 player all the time now. She won back-to-back -back challenge seasons, something that nobody had done on the female side in over 15 years. Next, we got Jordan Wisely, uh, three-time challenge champion, winner of X's 2, Dirty 30, and War of the Worlds 2. Uh, statistically, maybe, like, the most impressive winner because he three-peated in the modern era, something that is statistically, like, one of the most difficult things to do. Uh, he dominates finals, has one of the best elimination records ever, and he has bad haircuts. Good for him, man. Casey Clark, the winner of Spies, Lies, and Allies. She's one of the best daily challenge competitors in, in the show's history. Uh, she's 2-0 in eliminations. 
Uh, she, she's someone who has an incredible social game. I mean, the only reason she's 2-0 in eliminations is because they had the gold school twist where you had to go into elimination, and she went into elimination and beat good competitors. Casey's a beast. I mean, like, there's no other way to put it. She's never been eliminated on a challenge so far. Uh, so, again, putting the best against the best, Casey's one of the best. Oh, my God. Bevmo putting Kellyanne Judd as a six-time loser. That's a bit rude. Kellyanne's a very good player. Kellyanne was, you know, arguably, you know, she tied with Johnny for first place on Challenge All-Star Season 1. Johnny, I mean, Kellyanne uh, is, is a champion in that, right? I mean, then she didn't get the official title, but to me, like, that is just as good as winning a Challenge Championship, but not really. It's as close as you can get to win without winning. Kellyanne's a beast, though. Like, she's been to multiple finals. She's incredible in daily challenges. Next, we got Nelson. Hey, Nelson has not won a daily challenge in 53 straight daily challenges now, but who cares? If you can get if you can keep get casting on the show and then keep asking you every week, hey Nelson, when's the last time you won a daily challenge? Yeah, who cares? He's cashing those appearance paychecks. He's looking good. <laughs> going on this global show, he, there's no way he's gonna beat any of these people in a daily challenge. But you know, I love Nelson. He's good comedic relief and he's just a good presence to have on the show because you need a bit you need someone who's messy, you need some chaos. Naya Moore, who went to the final on Challenge All-Stars Season 3. Uh, she came in third place, and it was not a great showing in Day 2 when she had to go completely individual. She just really couldn't stand on her own two feet. Uh, her endurance wasn't super great. Uh, and, you know, honestly, in the season, she was a bit underwhelming. She never finished top three in a single daily challenge, even up until the final daily challenge, when there were only four players left. Uh, she won her elimination against Sylvia, but it wasn't like the most like physically like I don't know daunting game or whatever. Though Naya is still a six foot athlete who could definitely beat people in a lot of like individual stuff. I just don't know whether she stacks up with these all time greats and how she'll fit in. But it's kind of crazy because Naya was someone who was not on the show for so long, and now she's back in the family, and I, I'm, I'm glad to have Naya back. Someone that's really interesting to see back is Theo Campbell from. Uh, the Love Island, you know, second place on War of the Worlds won. Really should have won that final. What it came down to was the fact that he just really fumbled on the math portion of that final. Uh, it, it screwed him over, but he put up a dominant performance, second place on, you know, his rookie season in the hardest final ever against one of the most stacked casts in challenge history where he beat vets. He won a ton of daily challenges, beat Kyle in a hall roll elimination, has a 4-1 and one elimination record as a whole. He's good with puzzles. Uh, he's messy. He gets into rivalries. He gets into arguments. Theo is a great casting. The big question mark is how will he do now that his vision is impaired? And that's why he has not been on the show to this point because, you know, he had a, he had a gruesome accident where a champagne cork blended him in one eye. And it's hard to get cleared for this show when you're doing so much stuff over heights and they don't know whether you can see and that's a liability and stuff like that. I don't know how he got cleared, but he's back on the show. Uh, we know he's naturally a great athlete. It's just whether or not he'll have the coordination still. Now we have Tori Deal, and there is speculation about how she does on this Challenge Ride or Die season. Take that for what you will. Uh, she's also been to three finals, Dirty 30, War of the Worlds 2, and Spies, Lies, and Allies. You look at War of the Worlds 2 and Spies, Lies, and Allies, and those are finals that Tori definitely like should have won. I mean, she was on the winning team for War of the Worlds 2 and was putting up a great performance before she got purged out. And then on Spies, Lies, and Allies, she was easily the best player in that final on the female side, but because of a twist where... You know, it just came down to that last chase up the mountain and Casey getting CT as a partner. That was that was the ultimate deciding factor. If she had CT as a partner, she would have won that final too. But when it came to overall performance, Casey was, I mean, Tori was the best, but she didn't win. And that sucks. But that, you know, kind of like Kellyanne, that's as close as you can come to winning a challenge championship without winning a challenge championship. But again, not the official title, but she does really well on Ride or Dies is what people are saying. So maybe it'll be her season. Next up, we got Wes Bergman, uh, the duel. Rivals 2, and the most recently, the winner of Challenge All-Stars Season 3. And I like that Wes could have really just gone out on top. He could have retired here because, like, you know, he's had these moments where he's put on these masterpiece seasons and, it, like, he, he could just end his career at any moment and just go out on top. No, Wes has to come back and lose the first or second elimination like he's done in multiple seasons past because Wes is greedy. He, he gets a little bit of success and he wants more and more and more. He gets hungry for it. He's, he's a success little monster. He's just – he's craving it. But – I love Wes. He brings something to the show at all times. And, you know, 
Like, Wes is never a boring character. Uh, the only problem about Wes is that sometimes it can become the Wes show. But if you like the Wes show, you're loving it. And now we got Wes's best friend, yes, Duffy, from the Challenge All-Stars season one. He won that season. Uh, beat Darrell Taylor, shocked everyone, got up the mountain. He's an engineer, just an all-around great guy. I'm very happy to see Yes back on the show because he's a beast. I do hope he plays a bit more of a political game, but I don't think that's going to happen. Again, though, we're talking about best players against best players. Wes, Yes, Darrell, Jordan, Bananas, all there in the house again. I mean, is it a run back of Challenge All-Stars 3? Yes. But was that fun? Yes. And it's like those guys are so good that you could put them in any variation and they're still going to perform at a high level. Now we have other uh, Challenge contestants. We have Ben from the Challenge USA. Uh, ben made it to the final that season, but then uh, got medically de- uh, DQ'd, sent home because of a shoulder injury, uh, wasn't able to run the final. He was probably the second best guy in the daily challenges that season after Tyson. But again, I was not very impressed by Ben. Like, I think he was a very good, so I'll say this, Ben was a very good partner. He was very supportive to all his, like everyone in the house. He gave 110% all times. He showed a lot of heart. But when you look at the athleticism of the top challenge guys, I think so many of them would demolish him. Like, I just don't think that Ben holds up when it comes to like what a pull wrestle, a hall brawl, uh, a sprint, even a puzzle compared to some of the top, top guys. I don't think Ben's a bad player, but I don't think he's just, I don't think he's championship material. Next up, we got Claudia Albartario uh, from the Challenge Argentina. She looks phenomenal. I don't really know much about the Latin show, to be completely fair. I, there's some stuff I know about it, but I, I hear it was just more of a mess. I'm excited to see her on the show. Next up, we got Danny McRae, the winner of the Challenge USA. Uh, his best friend Fessy won't be on the show, but Danny's here for us. Uh, he put up a great performance in that final. After being like kind of under the radar the entire season, Danny showed out. He had the interns thrown the final. He was good with the puzzles. He was good with the memory. And he is a king of Sudoku. He has his wife, Kiki, who loves him. Uh, we're going to hear Kiki's name a lot on the Global Challenge, hopefully. I love Danny. He's a delightful guy. And I think like part of why Danny didn't succeed on Challenge USA is that it was a lot of like swimming and puzzles and mental stuff where, yeah, he did okay. He was, he was solid in those, but in this main show where this guy is a former NFL player and he's built well at like six foot tall, 220 or 210, he's going to he's gonna beat some people's butts in Hall Brawls, Paul Russells, and he's more meant for the MTV game than he was for the Challenge USA game, and yet he won Challenge USA, so that means Danny's going to be pretty damn good. Though it will be interesting to see how Danny does going against real athletes now. Uh, next up, we got Grant... I can't tell because the Bebmo spelling of his name is weird. Maybe they can't spell crap or whatever. Uh, from the Challenge USA or Grant Cray, maybe. I don't know. Uh, that's a physically imposing looking dude. He looks he looks like a marvel. And I should have done more research coming into this, but I've just been busy with life and the challenge hasn't been my first priority. But I wanted to make this video regardless. And I, you know, I know a lot about everyone else. <laughs> oh, baby. We got Justine Adiba from the Challenge USA. I love Justine. Uh, she's technically the third place finisher on Challenge USA, a former collegiate soccer player, really dynamic social game, just an all around lovely person, good with mental stuff, physical stuff, whatever. Uh, Justine is, I think Justine's just an amazing human being. I think she took that first season. She's going to improve way more now that she knows how to train. And similar to Danny, Justine is someone who I think like fit in more on the MTV show when it came to the actual competitions because her athleticism is like at a very high level. So you put her now into this new show, and I think she's going to thrive. I think Justine's fantastic. I'm really happy to see that they gave her another shot. Kaz Crossley from the Challenge UK, and this is someone I've actually heard of before. Uh, again, I don't really know too much about some of these people, but I'm excited to see her. Uh, Kiki Morris, who is a like beautiful, a mess, and I'm really like a big character. She's from the Challenge Australia version. I'm excited to see her. She's someone you really need to keep your eye on. Nathan Henry from the Challenge UK. Sarah Lucina. Oh my God. Oh, Sarah Lucina. What should I say about Sarah? I think she has a very whack vibe. She's not very good in the daily challenges, as we know, but she came in and she crushed that final on uh, Challenge USA because she is a marathon runner. She was built for that moment and she and she killed it. I don't know if she saw the Sudoku. I don't know if she did at the end of the day. Um, and there were a lot of weird stuff in that final that happened to Desi and just plot twists with the partner stuff. 
I don't know if she would have won that final under normal conditions, but Sarah did kill it. There's no, there's no arguing against that. I just, I can't wait to see some of these top challenge competitors uh, really, you know, show, like show their own against Sarah because I don't think they're going to be afraid of her necessarily, uh, like the other girls were on Challenge USA. So we'll see how she does. Uh, Rodrigo Cascon from Challenge Argentina, Sofia Juji Jimenez, uh, Challenge Argentina. Kristen Phillips, Challenge UK. And then we have alternates. Apparently, Derek Kozinski got dropped, and that makes me sad because Derek has always been supportive of me over the years. I consider him basically a friend at this point, very good guy. Makes me sad he's not going to be on this show. Uh, Devin Walker, who went to the final Spies Last in Alice and apparently does incredibly well on Ride or Dies, take that for what you will, uh, gets left out the show. I think it's better for Devin. I think going against these actual top players, he might get a bit exposed. Uh, I think he's a very good player. I don't know if he's quite elite. Nehemiah, who did all three Challenge All-Star seasons, was probably the biggest character on the second season. King's Palace, whatever. He gets dropped. Uh, he's an alternate. Makes me sad because Nehemiah, great character, good guy. MJ Garrett, winner of Challenge All-Star season two, got exposed a bit in season three for a lack of political game, maybe not being on quite the level as the top, top guys. Uh, but, you know, he's an alternate. Alyssa and Kylan from Challenge USA, neither of them made the final, so it's interesting to see them on this list. Though I think the reason they're on this list is because they didn't go to the final. Because I think people like Tyson, who they would have loved to cast on this show, uh, someone like Desi or Angela, who, you know, like they would fit in perfectly with these top players. But they're probably like so like Disin- disinterested from doing the show after the clown car that was the Challenge USA final that they just have no interest in doing it. Meanwhile, Alyssa and Kylan weren't even there, so they don't know how bad it truly was because they didn't experience it firsthand. Uh, it's kind of amazing that Justine's back, and it's part of me, partially why maybe Ben's back too, because, I don't know, maybe it wasn't as bad for them, but a lot of other people probably would have done it, but they just don't want to now. Let's run back the cast. Kristen, Challenge US UK. Sophia from Challenge Argentina. Rodrigo from Challenge Argentina. Sarah Lucina, winner of Challenge USA. Nathan Henry, Challenge UK. Kiki Moore, Challenge Australia. Kaz Crossley, Challenge UK. Christina Dibas, third place, Challenge USA. Grant Krepp, Challenge Australia. Danny McRae, Challenge USA winner and former Dallas Cowboys player. Claudia Albertario, Albert, 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 uh, Challenge Argentina. Ben Drybergen, Challenge USA. Yes, Duffy, winner Challenge US, uh, Challenge All Star Season One. Wes Bergman, winner Challenge All Star Season Three. Tori Deal, three time finalist. Theo Campbell, Challenge War of the Worlds One, runner up. Naya Moore, Challenge All Star Season Three, third place finisher. Nelson Thomas, second place Challenge Invasion. Kellyanne Judd, tied for first place among females on Challenge All Star Season One. Casey Clark, winner of Spies, Lies, and Allies. Jordan Wisely, three-time challenge champion. Exes 2, 30-30, and War of the Worlds 2. John A. Mannion, winner of Challenge All-Star Season 2 and 3, tied for first place on Season 1 as well. Absolute queen, the face of Challenge All-Stars. Johnny Bananas, blah, seven-time champion, though. Uh, most recently, Total Madness. Cody Weatherton, two-time champion, winner of the Gauntlet 2 and the Duel 1. First ever female solo champion in challenge history. Darrell Taylor is the only man to ever win four straight challenge championships. Gauntlet, Inferno, Inferno 2, Fresh Meat 1. Legend. Brad Fiorenza, winner of Cutthroat. Second place challenge All-Stars 3 Season 1. And Amber Brizocho, winner of Double Agents. And that is our show. I mean, we're going to be they're going to be filming for seven weeks. And I'm excited to see this cast because it is a stacked field of competitors. If you like the competition part of the show... Here it is. I just hope that the final isn't, you know, run up a mountain, uh, like run a four day final. And then all it comes down to is run up a mountain and crack some heads. Like that's, that's what the finals are at this point, but it's going to be a good show with this cast. I mean, like, I think a lot of people are upset that there aren't more champions, but it's, it's even the people that aren't champions that are on the show, like Kellyanne, Nelson, Theo, like they bring something in terms of entertainment, personality, confessionals, chaos. I like them. I like the castings. I, I think I'm going to be excited for the season. I mean, at first I wasn't too excited because I'm like, this isn't the MTV show. This isn't the CBS show. I don't even know where this is going to be airing. Is this going to be on at like Paramount? Probably Paramount. I don't know. I think we're going to get a good show out of it. But hey, 
make sure to stay tuned to the channel and just have a great day. Hit like, subscribe, whatever. Have a great day.